Hey guys, I'm Zoltan from Felons Miniatures, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be painting one of the Reverend Moyers from the Bakunin Observance Pack. It will be a pretty easy process to follow if you're looking for a similar result and you can apply the same to the rest of the Moyers too. We will start by applying all the base coats to the mini, so later we can highlight them one by one. I'll be using AK Interactive Paints for this one, but you can easily substitute the colors for any other paint range as well. For all the red elements, I used Burnt Red. For most of the armor and weapons, Camouflage Green. For all the parts that will be either white or metallic in the end, I use the same anthracite grey. You can use any other grey as well, but I wanted to have the bluish tones of this one in the shadows of my whites and metals. For the face, I used orange-brown, which seems like a bold choice, but considering the skin tone we are shooting for, I think it will work out. For the sword, I used whole red for the handle and dark green for the blade. I also painted the wreckage she's standing on with some purple mixed with black. With that we are done with all the base colors and we can start highlighting. For now I'll leave the black parts to the end. Black is a tricky color to highlight, especially since here we are talking about fabric, which is usually not a shiny material. We will do some soft highlights at the end when everything else is finished. Let's start with the red parts. For the first highlights, I mix some blood red into the burnt red and use this mixture to highlight all the edges and also cover some of the upper facing areas. Don't cover the entirety of the burnt red though, since otherwise both the shadows and the highlights will look the same, you will have a very bright model but zero contrast. From this point on, I'll be using two highlights on almost all the different colors. If you are looking for a faster result, you can skip the first highlight and immediately jump to the second one. This way you will maintain the contrast, but you will sacrifice some of the quality as a result. For the second highlight, I simply use pure blood red and use it almost exclusively as an edge highlight. I only applied a little bit inside the previously covered area on the most prominent parts, like the upper facing part of the chest. For the green armor and weapons, I simply mixed in some ice yellow in the camouflage green to get a lighter color for the highlights. The first mix I used was around like 30% yellow and 70% green, and in the second highlight I increased the yellow to around 50%. If you pay attention, you can probably spot that I am not only covering the existing edges, but I am also creating fake ones, like on the shin armor where I drew some segments on the armor that do not actually exist on the sculpt. This is not necessary, of course, and you can skip them if you are not comfortable doing them, but they can help create more contrast and visual interest on the model. Essentially, we are using a tiny bit of freehand to create details. It is a fun practice and it adds more to the end result than you would think. One important thing to remember when you do the second highlight, make sure to only apply it on less than half of the edges you covered with the previous one, mostly concentrating to the upper facing edges. If you cover too much of the previous highlight, you will lose the contrast between them and you might as well just use the brighter color. Let's do the metals and the whites next. These two elements are painted the same way, but with a different level of highlighting. We will simply cover more of the whites with the lighter colors. The first highlight will be dark sea gray, and I will cover around 90% of the previous color with this. It is good practice to start with the edges and work yourself inwards from there. This way you will see how much space you have to highlight and how much of the darker color you can leave behind. The next color will be medium grey, and you will see that after this one, the surface will start to look like white. For the whites, cover only the upward facing edges and around 60-70% of the area inside the previous highlight, but make sure to leave some of the previous color behind. For the metals, it is enough if you cover only the edges, mostly restricting it to the ones facing up. This will be the step where I will be using three highlights instead of two, since these materials should look brighter than the rest. With silver grey I'll do what I did with the previous step, but on fewer and smaller areas. This color is pretty close to white and you might see some chalkiness on the surface. You can thin the paint down to 50% water, 50% paint and glaze it over the whole white surface to even it out and get the shadows and the highlights more integrated. 
The wreckage at her feet doesn't need much attention. Actually, you should be careful not to over-highlight it. It should be less noticeable than the rest of the model. When all is done, you should be left with a white that has some depth in the shadows. On to the swords. We won't spend much time on the handle since it's so small. The first highlight with Sahara yellow goes onto the edges and a bit on the surface, followed by pale yellow only on the edges. Then a bit of ivory on some of the most prominent edges. You can finish it off with a couple of dots of pure white as well, but don't overdo this otherwise it will just look like white in the end. At this stage I also use the pure white to highlight some of the edges of the white breastplate because I just couldn't help myself. The sword is a lot of fun to do. The first highlight goes on all the edges. This is quite fitly work since it's such a small surface, but if you remove most of the paint from your brush and then use the side of it with very little pressure, it should be easily doable. If you want to go fancy, you can create a bit of transition on the blade as well. The final highlight will be pistachio, a nice saturated yellowish greenish color. This is only needed on the upper facing edges and you can apply it a bit more thick at the tip of the blade where it's supposed to be brighter. I have to admit I managed to mess up the footage of the black parts a bit, I didn't start the recording and I was half finished by the time I noticed. Not a big problem though, I repainted half of the cave with black so you can see everything from the start. I started by mixing dark sea grey with black, something like 50-50. I thinned it down to a glaze and applied it over the raised surfaces of the black parts. Once I managed to get the difference between the grey on top and the black below, I switched to a more aggressive method. I took pure dark sea grey, removed most of it from the brush on the paper towel and then started to do a lot of small scratches on the surface. With a little practice this is super easy and fun. On the places where you want the most highlights you can simply reverse the direction and create a kind of cross hatch pattern. The overlapping scratches then create a brighter highlight. If you want to be fancy like me you can apply some orangish colors in small dots and blotches to the bottom to make it look like it was dragged through dirt. Now at this point this might look a bit too harsh for black fabric, but the next step will fix it with almost no effort. Take pure black, thin it down to a glaze where it barely is more than water. Remove most of it from the brush and then glaze over the whole surface of the black areas. If you did it right, the pattern will be still visible and probably still too harsh, but it is starting to get integrated into the black. Keep repeating until you feel it's dark enough. And there you go, worn looking dark fabric. At this point it's basically just a face left, but first it's time to get a bit fancy and add some more color. It's worth adding a bit of white before any effects since anything you paint over it will look brighter. Then take some blue-green, water it down to 50-50 water and paint and simply drop it in the places you prepared with the whites. Easy peasy. What is not easy is the face. You can paint the whole model perfectly, but if you mess up the face, everybody will look only at that. Not sure about you, but faces are my downfall, so let's see how this goes. The colors I used were orange brown, medium flash, ochre, magenta, wine red and a tiny bit of ice yellow since that makes everything better. And while we are watching the footage of me spending way too much time getting it right, here are a couple of tips. It is a female face so while we need some contrast if you go for too much it will look terrible. It's also a human face and it needs a bit of life so a tiny bit of red glaze in the mid tones makes it more natural. And the most important one, this can't be done fast. The human brain is crazy about details on a face, so every little mistake will stand out more than anywhere else. So take your time and keep retouching. This is how it turned out. Face won't win any beauty contests, but I think it's better than my usual efforts. Practice makes perfect, I guess. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of this model. Corvus Belly really did a great job with the sculpt and I think I managed to do it some justice with the paint job. What do you guys think? I hope you found some useful tips in the video, if you did don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more infinity content. See you in the next one.